Alright, so welcome to another video on the range cutoff fourth order method. And in this video, we're going to solve the following second order differential equation, which we already solved using the older method in a previous video. So we're going to have the exact same initial conditions. We're going to have three meters in terms of displacement, and then initial velocity is just going to be zero. And we already found out that the analytical solution to this equation is just three cosine of this term. Now, for the RK4, what we're going to do is, because remember that RK4 has the property that it only works for first order differential equations, much in the same way that the Euler method only works for first order. So what we need to do is, we need to take this second order differential equation and then bring it down into a system of two first order differential equations. So what I did here was, I just said, well, let x equals to x, just to retain some of the notation. Now let's write v in terms of x dot, so that's the first derivative, and then the derivative of v, which is the acceleration, let's make that equal to the expression here. So in the end you have two equations, each one is in terms of a first derivative, and then what we're going to do is we're going to set each of these equals to some function of three variables. We have t, x, and v. If we had a third order differential equation, what we would do is we would split it into three first order differential equations and then we would have three functions and we would have each function would be a function of four variables because you have time variable and then you have each of the solutions becomes a variable in itself. So now comes the, the tricky part. You're going to have to write a set of five equations for each of these uh, first order differential equations. So five equations, I mean you have four values of k in terms of the function and then you have your update equation but basically each of all of this is going to go inside the same loop and now look at this is a really interesting case because essentially here for this one we're going to have the first value of k k1x we're going to have a value of we're going to have k values for each of the solutions both x and v this one is going to be equal to vi. And now look here, when we put the arg we will put values into the arguments of the function, we are going to have three inputs. And notice how here we have xi plus h times k1x over 2, and then vi plus h times k1v over 2. So what this means is that in each of these values, even though we're calculating k1x, k2x, and so on, we're still going to require values of k1v and so on. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to solve both equations, so basically this whole set of eight, or actually ten equations, inside the same loop. And we're going to have to alternate, so basically we're going to calculate k1x first, then k1v, which is going to be equal to minus k over m times xi, and then we're going to calculate k2x and then k2v. And notice how the arguments are essentially the same. The inputs are the same in every single one of the values, but what changes is that we're using function 2, which is this expression, and here we're using function 1, which is this expression all throughout. So it gets a little bit complicated, but hopefully you can try and derive this yourself, and you will see that it actually becomes quite straightforward after you have some practice deriving these equations. So, one of the things that are worth pointing out, and I think this is a really important point that a lot of uh, resources that talk about Ranch Cutter don't do, is that you need to include this h term. So, remember, h is just your step size, delta t. You need to enclose, include this h in these values as well, not just in the, the first argument, but rather in all of them. And... It seems rather surprising, but if you do not multiply these terms here by h, you get the completely wrong solution. You get a completely wrong solution. And it seems rather strange because when we talked about a single for sort of differential equation, we saw how we could easily have the function. So for this one, we would have t plus h over 2. And then for the second argument, we would have x plus k value over 2 and we wouldn't have to multiply by h and we still got the right answer but when you when you're dealing with higher order differential equations and when you're dealing with functions that have more than two inputs 
you need to multiply those k values by h inside of here. So, and the main reason for that is that if you do not write h basically in um, outside of the function, then you need to write it inside. So that's essentially the main point of it. Because remember, for k1x, you would essentially be putting the value here h times this, but because we have not included it here, we have to put it inside of the arguments like that. And then in the end, what we can do is we can say, well, let's factorize everything out. And now we're going to have h over 6 here. So this is basically what we're going to get. So that is the main point. So if you basically, it's the same thing that we discussed before, but I think this is a rather important point. If you put your h outside like this, then you don't need to put it, you don't need to multiply by the k values, you can leave it out. But if you do not put it outside multiplying the function in each of the k values, then you need to put your h inside here. And then you need to put it outside here as well. So that is just the main point that I wanted to make, is that you need to make sure that you put that in here, because you need to make sure that the values are being calculated in the right manner. We didn't deal with that issue because we simply wrote it at the front in the in the previous examples. And then for your velocity, what you're going to have is exactly the same thing. So you're going to have your function 2, give it 3 inputs, now the expression is different. So you're going to give it another function here, 3 inputs, same thing, multiply by h, otherwise put the h outside, and then don't put it next to the k values, and then you have this update equation here. So 10 equations in total, all of them are going to go into the exact same loop. Alright, so I wrote the program here in Octave, so hopefully you can see. I don't think you, I can show you side by side because obviously there's so many of them. They don't even fit on the screen. But here's what we have. We have a, we have a step size dt of 0 0.1. Then we have k equals 1, m equals 1. And the initial conditions, we have a vector of time go from 0 to 100 seconds. Our exact solutions, we have one for the position, one for the velocity. And then for IK4, we've simply declare, declared two functions. We're going to declare function F1 and then our function F2. And then because we're using H here, we're basically going to make it equal to DT. So that's the main thing that we need to take into account there. And we create two empty vectors, basically displacement velocity put in the initial conditions. And now this is our main loop. So you notice that now we have eight values of k. We have four values of k for each of the variables or the solutions. And they alternate. So we need to do this because this one here is calling in values of k1x and also k1v. So we need to calculate k1v before we put it in here. And then we do basically the same for everything else. So we're going to alternate between the two values. Now, in general, it doesn't matter whether you start with K1V or K1X, but as long as you retain the same kind of pattern, it should be fine. You should get the same answer. And then at the end here, I have my update equations. So in the end, it should all work out nicely. So we're going to plot this here, and we're going to see what we get. And right off the bat, you can see that both solutions are actually really close to each other. And you can see that even though we're taking a whole range of time here, 100 seconds, the solution does not diverge as time moves forward. And this is a really important property of the RK4 algorithm, is that it is much more stable than the Euler method. If you recall, the Euler method just kept diverging away from the exact solution as time progressed. But this one actually stays at a constant amplitude, so it is actually attaining by the physics of this problem in which we don't have any energy dissipation, so the amplitude of the oscillations should remain constant all the way to infinity. And in fact, we could try and extend this even further to say 200 seconds, and we can see whether or not the solution for the RK4 is actually going to diverge. So obviously, the range cutoff method is a little bit slower when it comes to computation, but it is a lot more accurate, it is stable, and it is generally just better in every aspect than the Euler method. Okay, so we can see once again, because the axes have auto scaling, we can see that both values actually have the same amplitude and it remains constant. So 
RK4 is unconditionally stable. So basically, it doesn't matter what the conditions you give it, it is always going to be stable. So it's going to have this kind of thing. It is only in very, very limited cases. Like, uh, for example, if you're solving a nonlinear differential equation, there are certain input parameters that may cause RK4 to become unstable. But in general, you will get a very stable and very neat solution for RK4. And notice that we're using a very, very large step size. I mean, 0 0.1. For, for the other method, even using 0 0.001, I think, we still saw a whole bunch of inaccuracies. And we saw this the solution diverge away from the exact one. So obviously, this is much better. We, because we can, e even, we can pretty much just get away with, with a much larger step size and we still get much more accurate results so this is why ranch kata method is so much better than oil method so this is what i use to solve ordinary differential equations non-linear linear any kind that you want to solve i think ranch kata is the way to go and you can imagine that you can extend this to higher order differential equations simply by getting more equations so if you have a third order equation what you would do is you would derive this set of equations for three different uh, first order differential equations and then you would put all all of those inside your main loop here but this is pretty much how you implement the ranch cutter method and how you use it for higher order differential equations and hopefully this has helped to clear out some confusion that a lot of people have because i don't think it is well documented in terms of implementation i mean you can find equations sure but when it comes to actually implementing it and translating it into something that the computer can understand, I think that the literature is quite limited on that. So hopefully this series of videos has, have helped you understand the concepts and the implementation a lot better.